Hello and welcome to Gravitas Plus. I am Molly Gambhir. Pakistan is in a state of mess. The economy is in the ICU, the politicians are at war, and the people are crying for help. I know what you must be wondering. What's new here? Pakistan has been in a perpetual state of mess since its birth. Well, yes, it has. But this time, it's one hell of a mess. Look at the developments. There is a medicine shortage. Pakistan does not have even basic medicines like Disprin, Panadol, Calpol, Brufin. If I speak of inflation, it stands at 31.5%. Not since 1974 has Pakistan seen such a high rate of inflation. If I speak of food prices, they are touching the sky. Milk is selling at 235 Pakistani rupees per litre. A kg of chicken costs 700 to 780 Pakistani rupees. Boneless meat is selling at 1,000 Pakistani rupees per kg. Same story with fuel prices. Petrol is selling at 272 Pakistani rupees per litre. Diesel is selling at 262 Pakistani rupees per litre. Kerosene at 217 per litre. If I speak of the currency, it's falling like a bungee jumper. Only that we doubt if it will be able to bounce back. As of this week, the value of the Pakistani rupee is 278 against the dollar. This is an all-time low. If I speak of jobs, last we checked, over 1 million Pakistanis could lose their jobs, mostly in the textile sector. If I speak of unemployment, it's been on a steady rise since 2019. This year, that is 2023, it is projected to grow further to 8.5%. If I speak of the GDP, for 2023, the GDP growth forecast has been trimmed to 4.3%. If I speak of forex reserves, the cash and other assets held by Pakistan Central Bank, it's another tragic story. Pakistan has just $3.25 billion left in foreign reserves. And let's not even talk about terror. In the month of February alone, terrorists managed to carry out 58 attacks in Pakistan. 58 attacks in 28 days. That's an average of over two per day. This is another record in itself. Now, we understand that breaking records is a good thing. But Pakistan seems to be breaking records in a race to the bottom. So much so that the people of Pakistan are making fun of the state of affairs. They are making memes. Because memes seem to be the only affordable thing for them at the moment. The question is, why is Pakistan in such a critical situation? And what can it do to climb out of this hole? Well, to start with, Pakistan's economy has always been unstable. The difference now is that it's nearing collapse. This is primarily because of the country's debt. According to the World Bank, by the end of December 2022, Pakistan's total external debt stood at 17.87 trillion Pakistani rupees. I repeat, 17.87 trillion. This is one of the highest levels of debt the world over. And what's worse, Pakistan has to repay a large chunk of this amount and repay it right away. In fact, one report says that in 2023 alone, Pakistan will have to repay $22 billion to foreign lenders. But to repay this amount, it needs cash. Where is it going to get this cash from? God knows. I told you about the Forex reserves. Usually, countries meet their debt obligations from the money that they have in forex reserves. Pakistan needs to repay $22 billion in debt, but it has just $3.2 billion in reserves. How on earth will it manage to repay this? Again, God knows. In most cases, countries tend to make up for debt through new investments that they receive. Foreign direct investments or FDI to be precise. Pakistan is suffering on that front as well. Have a look at this report. Pakistan's FDI plunged 44% during the first seven months of this fiscal year. If we break it down further, in the last fiscal year, Pakistan received $1.22 billion in FDI. In this fiscal year, it has received just $683 million. 
which means foreign investors are wary about sending money to Pakistan. And we don't blame them. Have a look at this report now. Global ratings agency Moody's has cut Pakistan's sovereign credit rating. Earlier, the rating was CAA1. It has now been downgraded to CAA3. Why is that? Because of Pakistan's foreign reserves. They are far less than necessary to cover its imports. Also less than its external debt obligations in the immediate term. Moody says this has raised the risks of a debt default. Hence the downgrade. So how will this impact Pakistan? Well, these ratings will come into play every time Pakistan gets a foreign investor. These investors will assess Islamabad's ability to repay loans and live up to the investments based on its credit rating. Simply put, this report is going to hurt Pakistan financially. It could make the current turmoil even worse. And what about the IMF? Why is it not helping Pakistan? Because it has already done enough. So it has stalled the bailout. It says Pakistan needs to implement certain conditions before it gives out another bailout to the country. What conditions? Basically, setting up an anti-corruption task force, hiking electricity tariffs, imposing a levy on petroleum products. Is Islamabad doing this? It has no option. Have a look at this headline. In its bid to secure the bailout, Pakistan has nearly doubled the gas prices. And if reports are to be believed, it is expected to announce a similar increase in the price of electricity. Pakistan has also hiked tax on luxury goods and services so that it could get an IMF bailout. Reports say taxes on a raft of luxury imports will be increased in order to unlock the next batch of an IMF loan. And by the way, this increase is just the beginning. Pakistan's finance minister says that in the days ahead, the prime minister could introduce more austerity measures to meet the IMF's demands. And this makes you wonder, why is the IMF after Pakistan? Why can it not just give the money? Well, there are a host of reasons, and two of them stand out. One, the fear that Pakistan will not be able to repay the loan, like we've been saying. And number two, the fact that rich Pakistanis contribute very little to the economy. Let me read out a statement from the IMF's managing director who summed up the situation quite well. I'm quoting, Those who are making good money in public or private sectors need to contribute to the economy. It shouldn't be that the wealthy benefit from subsidies, it should be the poor who benefit from them. So the IMF wants rich Pakistanis to do their bit. Because at a time when the poor are suffering, the richy rich are still living a life of luxury. They are buying luxury cars, importing them from abroad. In fact, reports say during the last six months, Pakistan spent $1.2 billion on imports of luxury cars, high-end electric vehicles and spare parts. The list of buyers consists of Pakistani businessmen, as well as the country's army generals, both current and ex. Look at this report. Dawn carried it last year. It says ex-military officials in Pakistan were allowed import of tax-free bulletproof vehicles. Can you imagine that? This only tells you about the misplaced priorities of not just the Pakistani government, but also its rich and elite. Instead of helping the government, instead of donating money to the poor, the rich are basking in the glory of their fortune as the economy sinks to the bottom of the barrel. The question is, is there a way out? Can things be fixed? Can Pakistan recover? Yes, it can. But to do that, the leaders of the country who cannot stop abusing each other will have to put their differences aside and build consensus to resolve the mess. As they say, an eye for an eye makes the world blind. But unfortunately, the country's leaders seem to be turning a blind eye to the common man's misery.